So we'll do a few examples so that it will become more clear to you. Given open loop transfer function gh is 5 into s plus 3 divided by s into s minus 1. Find stability using Nyquist stability criteria. So first we will write the equation z is equal to n plus p. So we need to find n using the Nyquist plot and p is the number of poles in the right half of s plane of the open loop transfer function. So p we can get directly from this given transfer function, right? So here p is equal to 1 because s minus 1 is present in the denominator. So s is equal to plus 1 will be the pole. Plus 1 is in the right half. So p is equal to 1. Now you have to find n. To find n, we need to draw Nyquist plot. So in order to draw the Nyquist plot, we first have to start with the Nyquist path in S plane. Okay. You can see that there is one pole at the origin. So you have to take a slight detour like this and the rest of it will be as it is. So we can start from step 1. What is step 1? You have to draw the polar plot. That means for omega varying from 0 to infinity, what will be the plot? The gh plot. Okay. So for that we will write gh is equal to 5 into s plus 3 divided by s into s minus 1. You have to substitute s is equal to j omega. So you are going to get 5 into j omega plus 3 divided by j omega into j omega minus 1. So what will be the magnitude here? Magnitude of gh is given by 5 into root over 9 plus omega square divided by omega into root over 1 plus omega square. Then what about the phase? This is given by tan inverse omega by 3 minus 90 degrees minus 180 minus tan inverse omega. So why we are taking 180 minus tan inverse omega? Because the real part is negative here. When the real part is negative, then you write the phase as 180 minus tan inverse the imaginary part by the real part. Now we substitute omega is equal to 0 then what will be the magnitude? It will be infinite. Okay. And what about the phase? Phase is going to be minus 270 degrees or you can say plus 90 degrees. Now what about the case when omega is equal to infinity? Then the magnitude you are going to get 0 and the phase you are going to get minus 90 degrees. So the Nyquist plot is going to, this is the gh plane. Okay. So the magnitude is infinity and the angle is minus 90. So it is going to start somewhere here and it is going to end at origin at an angle minus 90 degrees. So it is starting from here and it is ending here. What about in between? If you see the phase, it is given as tan inverse omega by 3 minus 90 degrees minus 180 minus tan inverse omega, right? This you can write as tan inverse omega by 3 plus tan inverse omega minus 270 degrees. Now, one thing that you can observe here is this phase will always be negative. Why is that? Because here you have minus 270 degrees and the highest value of this will only be if omega is infinity and this will become plus 90, this will become plus 90. It is still going to be plus 180 minus 270 which is a negative angle. Now what is the purpose of finding this point? You can see that when the Nyquist plot will intersect the real axis, it will have to pass through a negative angle only. right? So we can take that negative angle to be minus 180 degrees. So this is how we find out the, to find out the intersection with real axis. Okay. So this one you are going to get tan inverse omega 3 plus tan inverse omega is equal to 90 degrees. So you are going to get 
tan inverse omega by 3 plus omega divided by 1 minus omega square by 3 is equal to 90 degrees. This is possible. See tan inverse something is 90 degrees means this value should be infinity and this will be infinity only when denominator is 0. Right? So, you are going to equate 1 minus omega square by 3 is equal to 0 so that you are going to get omega is equal to root 3. So, the Nyquist plot is going to intersect the negative real axis when omega is equal to root 3. Next, what is the second part? We have to draw the mirror image of this polar plot about the x axis. Okay? So, the step 2 is going to be, we will draw it once again. This is the gh plane. This was the polar plot we got. Now, the mirror image is going to be like this. Okay? So, what is the direction? This is the direction. It is coming from like this point, going to origin and then coming back to this point. We can even express the values of omega. Here, omega is tending to 0. At this point, omega is tending to plus infinity. At this point, that is slightly above the x-axis, omega is tending to minus infinity and here it is again 0. Now, since these are positive values, here you will write omega tending to 0 plus, here you will write omega tending to 0 minus. Okay? But again, what else is left out? The small detour. We have a pole at origin. right? So, we have the small detour at the origin. You can represent the pole here. Whenever there is a pole, what is going to happen? You are going to get a half circle or a semicircle, right? So, how is that going to look like? We know that the phase is minus k theta, where theta varies from minus 90 degrees to 0 degrees to plus 90 degrees. So, here the phase will vary from plus 90 degrees to minus 90 degrees. So, that means in the clockwise sense. Now, if you join this in this direction, then what will happen clockwise sense will be like this. But that cannot be correct. Why? Because this direction is going like this, but this direction is going in the opposite direction, which is not correct. So, it should be in the opposite direction. Opposite means like this. Okay. So, now this is the clockwise direction. So, you can see now the direction is going like this. Okay. So, here we have completed the Nyquist plot. Once we have completed the Nyquist plot, then what will be the next step to find the encirclements, finding the value of n. We have to see whether minus 1 comma 0 is in this region or in this region. Now, we know that the value of omega at this point is equal to root 3. Now, when omega is equal to root 3, then what will be the value of gh? That is what we have to find out. Okay? So, the magnitude gh at omega is equal to root 3. This is going to be the magnitude we have seen it was 5 into root over omega square plus 9 divided by omega into omega square plus 1. If you substitute omega square is equal to 3, then you are going to get the final answer as 5. So, this point here is minus 5 comma 0. So, that means minus 1 comma 0 is lying in this region. So, now you can see that this is the only encirclement. The other part is not encircling. So, what is this encirclement? There is only one circle, encirclement and which, which direction? In the counterclockwise sense. Counterclockwise means negative. So, therefore, n is equal to minus 1. Okay? So, once we know n, we also know p, we can find z. So, that is the final step. z is equal to n plus p, which is equal to minus 1 plus 1 which is going to give 0. So, this means this is a stable system. Okay? So, this is how you find out the stability using Nyquist criteria. Now, the next question is using Nyquist criteria find if the following system is stable. So, they have given a system which is in the form of a block diagram. 
So, first we have to find out the transfer function. Okay. Since we are concerned with g of s into h of s that is the open loop transfer function it is enough if we can find this we do not have to find the closed loop transfer function. right? So, what is g of s? 1 by s square and h of s is s plus 3 by s minus 3. So, now what is the very first step? First you have to draw the polar plot. First let me let's list down the steps that we have to take. Next step 2 will be to draw the image of polar plot with respect to the real axis or the x axis. Okay? And then step 3 is to find out what do we have the poles at origin. right? So, the small detours will give infinite radius semicircles. So, we have to draw that semicircle. Draw the infinite radius semicircles which arise because of poles at origin. Right? So, this will complete the Nyquist plot. Then step 4 will be to find the number of encirclements of the point minus 1 comma 0. Okay? And then you can find out the number of zeros is equal to n plus p using this formula. Okay? So, let us start with step 1 that is to draw the polar plot. In order to draw the polar plot, we will be needing in terms of j omega. So, we substitute s is equal to j omega. Then what will you get? g of j omega into h of j omega is equal to j omega plus 3 divided by j omega whole square into j omega minus 3. Okay? From here, you can find the magnitude and the phase. What is the magnitude? This is going to be root over 9 plus omega square divided by omega square into root over 9 plus omega square. So, you will be left out with 1 by omega square. What about the phase? g h is equal to tan inverse omega by 3 minus of 2 times 90 degrees because if there is one pole j omega then it is going to be 90 but since there are two poles we have written 2 into 90 minus finally 180 minus tan inverse omega by 3. Why we are writing 180 minus tan inverse omega by 3? Because the real part is negative here. So, this you are going to get 2 times tan inverse omega by 3 minus 180 minus 180 which is 360 degrees. Okay? But you can 360 degrees is simply 0 degrees. So, you can just neglect this out. So, the final phase you are going to get 2 tan inverse omega by 3. Now, at omega is equal to 0, then what is the magnitude and the phase? The magnitude is infinity and the phase g h is equal to 0 degrees. So, it is at the positive real axis side at an infinite magnitude. So, that means if you can draw the real part and the imaginary part, this is what g h plane. Okay? So, it is going to start somewhere here, which is at an infinite distance. Okay? Then what about omega is equal to infinity? When omega is equal to infinity, magnitude will become 0 and g h will become 2 times 90 degrees, which is 180 degrees. So, it is going to approach like this. Okay? So, this is the value at omega is equal to infinity. Now, if you observe the phase here 2 tan inverse omega by 3, this is changing from 0 to 180 degrees and it is always going to be positive because omega is a positive value. right? So, somewhere it should cut 90 degrees. In, in coming from 0 to 180 degrees through a positive angle, 90 degrees will also be cut. 90 degrees means cutting on the imaginary axis. So, where will that point be? This can be found like this intersection with j omega 
axis. So, intersection means to the, fa the phase 2 tan inverse omega by 3, this will be equal to 90 degrees. So, tan inverse omega by 3 is equal to 45 degrees, which means omega by 3 is equal to 1. So, omega is equal to 3. So, it is indeed cutting the imaginary axis as a, at a positive value. So, let us say it is somewhere here. So, now this is going to come like this and like this. Okay. So, this is the point where omega is equal to 3. Remember that this imaginary value is different. So, when you substitute omega is equal to 3 in gh, then you will get this value. But the, the value of frequency at this point is given by omega is equal to 3. And what is the direction? Here omega is equal to 0 and here omega is e tending to plus infinity. So, this is the direction. Okay. Next, what is the second step? The second step is to just draw the mirror image. So, this is going to be like this. Okay. So, here omega is tending to minus infinity and here omega is tending to 0. Now, once again, you can write 0 minus and 0 plus. This will be 0 plus because these are the positive values and this is going to be negative, 0 minus. What is the next step? It is to find out the infinite semicircles which are arising out of the poles at origin. Okay, So, we know that the phase is given by minus k theta where theta varies from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. This is the, we are talking about the small detour around the pole at origin. Right? So, that means the angle therefore, angle changes from plus k pi by 2 to minus k pi by 2. And what is k here? The value of k here is 2. There are 2 poles at origin. Here k is equal to 2. This implies that the angle will change from pi to minus pi. So, now we can complete the Nyquist plot. This is going to be from plus pi to it will touch here and then again from here to here. Okay. So, what will be the direction from plus pi to minus pi? So, this is in accordance with the direction that we got here. Now, we see that minus 1 comma 0 will be somewhere here only because this point is infinity. right? So, we have the number of encirclements. Step 4 is to find the number of encirclements which you are going to get as n is equal to. You can see that there is one encirclement which is in which direction? The clockwise direction. And the clockwise direction is considered to be positive. So, n is equal to plus 1. And what about p? If you remember the transfer function g into h, this was given by s plus 3 by s square into s minus 3. So, do you have any poles at in the right half of s plane? Yes, you have s is equal to 3. So, that means p is equal to 1. So, this means that z is equal to n plus p which is equal to 2. So, this means that there are two poles of the closed loop transfer function in the right half of S plane. So, it is an unstable system. The next question, a unity feedback system has open loop transfer function g h is equal to 1 by S minus 1 into S plus 2 into S plus 3. The Nyquist plot of open loop transfer function encircles the origin and the given options are like this. Okay? So, this question is simple as well as a little tricky. Okay? So, why is that? Till now, we have been discussing about the closed loop transfer function. So, we have talked about the encirclement of minus 1 comma 0. But here, they are asking the origin encirclement in the OLTF. That means D of S, H of S. So, that means the f of s plane is g of s h of s and we need the encirclement of the origin. So, that means they are talking about the n is equal to z minus p. This will now apply to only the open loop transfer function. Forget about the closed loop transfer function. Then what will be this? This is number of encirclements of origin 
this follows directly from the principle of argument right number of encirclements of origin in f of s plane and here we are taking f of s is g of s into h of s and what is z this is number of zeros of f of s in r h p and p is number of poles of f of s in r h p so what will be z and p we can directly get from the function itself right so what is z there are no zeros here so z is equal to 0 there are no zeros so there will be no zeros at the right half of s plane now what about the poles you have three poles but there is only one pole in the right half of s plane which is s is equal to 1 so p is equal to 1 so this means that n is equal to 0 minus 1 which is equal to minus 1 so it will be the origin will be encircled once in which direction since it is negative it is going to be in the counterclockwise sense but here direction is not asked so n is equal to 1 is enough the magnitude so this is going to be option b